Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You know, the greatest investment a country can make in its people is in education. And I don't think there would be many who would not be disputing that. So, are we doing that? Are we investing in education for our people? Sometimes I wonder, because an incident happened a couple of months ago maybe, or maybe it was a month and a half ago, where the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education were questioned by a young student who had presumably just completed her, her examinations. And she had done very well in these examinations, according to her. And she was asking for comment from the government, specifically from both the Prime Minister and the Education Minister, to explain to her why, even with her stellar results, she failed to be admitted to any kind of local university, and she was passed over for someone who had uh, poorer results, let's say. So, the question was asked, when are you going to reduce or get rid of the quota system and depend solely on merit? To which it appeared as though the reply was quite aggressive in that she was again questioned if she was aware of the social contract. And the, the, the explanation given was that we have to be fair to all the races in this country. That if you put a certain number of the non-Malays into the university, you also have to put a, a number of Malays into the university as well, according to the quota. So the question is, if the student does not merit admission to the university, are you still going to admit them based on their race? And I think the resounding answer to that would be yes. That's at least the way it was portrayed in your answer given to that poor student. And then to comment further by saying or by asking her, what is justice? And then replying, justice is fairness. Now I think this is a huge error. I think this woman, I mean the, the student, understood that it was unjust for someone who was who had less merit than her to be admitted to the university based upon their race if that was the case so i think she understood very well what justice was furthermore she understood that justice is supposed to be based on merit and fairness is supposed to be based on merit. So if you were to equate justice to be fair or fairness to be justice, but yet at the same time try to indicate that although you understand that the situation is not fair, it is still just. At least that's the perception some of us got. And I think that's a mistake. Fairness does not mean that everybody gets an equal share. That's not fairness. Fairness means you get what you deserve. And therefore, if you do not have the merit, you don't deserve the position, you don't deserve the admission, you don't deserve the job. That's what it means. So clearly, if you're going to start using a social contract as an excuse, I also think that's a mistake because I think maybe that this idea of the social contract has been somehow misinterpreted and abused over the, over the decades. This is what I mean. Supposing you had the three races represented by a single student, I mean a single student for each race, and they all had the same merit then if you said that the preference would be given first to the Malay, then I would say, okay, I think that would be what the social contract is trying to achieve. If on the other hand, you have these three students and yet they do not have equal merit. One of them is poorer than the other in terms of the, of the uh, qualification. 
you cannot then give that person the same opportunity as the other two who have merit because that's not fair the, remember fairness is you get what you deserve not an equal share so on the one hand although the social contract tries to make an equal opportunity for all the races to be represented I think the underlying spirit of this contract is that while you have an equal opportunity, you have to also show equal merit. Now see, the, the danger of this is, if you admit those who do not have merit to the universities, there are several things that are going to happen. One, you are reducing competitiveness in the universities, something which is terrible. Number two, you are reducing the merit of that university because you are bringing its standard down to accommodate those who are not meritorious enough to be admitted to that university and as a result the education will start failing and this has already happened it has been going on for decades the quality and standard of the university education in this country has become weaker and weaker and it's precisely because the university is admitting those who do not have merit to come to that university and be part of that university and as a result, because of their race, they are not there based on their merit. And as a result, the standard of education from that university starts to decline. The competitive starts to decline. There is no competitiveness, actually. Now, what kind of investment for the people of this country are you doing in that case? If that's the way you are running things, there is no way that you can say that you are investing in people and in education because that really isn't an education. Remember, not only does the student have to merit or have to warrant being admitted to the university, that university also has to maintain a certain degree of merit. And it can only do that by the quality of their teachers, by the quality of their instruction, by the quality of their students, by the quality of the curriculum. But the university has to be given freedom to decide these things. Now in Malaysia, the universities are given limited freedom. They do not have the freedom to decide what kind of syllabus, what kind of curriculum is going to be taught. What about the standard of the, of the teachers who are teaching in that university as well? These things really need to be um, completely examined. Now this is what reform means. Now, we've been waiting here for uh, more than a year. We are still to see any kind of reform, unfortunately. We still have hope. Don't get me wrong. We are still optimistic that there will be some kind of a reform in the near future. But so far, there has not been a reform. On the contrary, it appears like those people who are given the task and authority to make this reform do not have merit. Again, we go back to this issue of merit, and therefore, it's not fair. Fair meaning that we are not getting what we deserve. And we should be getting what we deserve. If what we expect is a reform, we should be getting that. The fact that we are not getting it is unfair, because we're not getting what we deserve. Neither is it fair for those who are in positions of authority and power to be there without merit. It's unjust to them. Because they cannot achieve what should be achieved because they don't understand it or they don't have any merit. It's plain and simple. So with all Malaysia's chest beating about how we have so many hundred universities in this country, all of it is to no avail. Because we have no merit in these universities. I've said this I don't know how many times. And yet, still... There are those who don't seem to understand. It's, it's precisely because they don't have merit. It's not because I'm the one not speaking clearly. It's because you don't have any merit. Look at the way the Devan Rakyat is run. Shouting left and right. I mean, don't you feel ashamed? This is how I feel when I watch such a thing. I feel shame because I know that those people who are shouting back and forth, they don't have any merit. Why are they there? They don't understand their job. They don't understand their duties. Instead of arguing about budget allocations, why don't they start talking about things that really matter? 
Budget allocations concern you. Let's tell the truth. Don't pretend as if it concerns the constituents that you are, that you are um, administering. Those constituents want you to come up with a plan, not to come up with a kanduri. They want you to come up with a specific substance, not some kind of a menu for the next kanduri that you're going to attend. So once again, think about this. Has the social contract that the Prime Minister mentioned, has it been misunderstood? Has it been deliberately misunderstood? Has it been casually misunderstood? Has it been misunderstood in general? And if it has, maybe we should take a, 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 a closer look at it again. I'm not saying that we should um, completely ignore the contract. No, of course not. What I'm only saying is that if you want to enforce such a quota system, then you should have all the races represented by equal merit. That's what it should be and not based on their race. You cannot get opportunity based on race. This is un-Islamic, very un-Islamic. So those people who consider themselves to be scholars of Islam, those people who consider themselves to be great ulama, think about that. But you don't because you're thinking primarily of race over everything else. That is un-Islamic. Thank you.